Thank you. Um, first of all, those of you who do not know Papua New Guinea, um, it's a big island country in the Pacific. Um, the Pacific is comprised of many, many small island countries. Papua New Guinea is the biggest. I come here this morning um, to talk to you mainly about food sovereignty. Our challenges in Papua New Guinea, uh, first of all, um, in our context, um, we are under a lot of, or uh, experiencing a lot of land grabbing at the moment. Papua New Guinea is made up of almost seven million now. Um, it's grown so fast in the last four years. Um, our people own most of the land, 97% um, under the land grabbing scheme in the past four years. We have lost 5.2 million hectares of land. Our people are mostly rural people. 85% of our people are rural people. 85% of that are, are women food producers. Much of our food, um, while it comes from agriculture produced, much of the food comes from the, the forest, from the land. So a lot of our people are still living from the wild. So in the context of extractive development in our country, we are exper experiencing a lot of challenges as our people are struggling to make food, to produce food, but at, at the same time, our development is coming in and it wants our land. And so, what happens to the women food producers? Now they have to make choices whether to remain on the land and produce their food or go to town and seek work in factories. We have large populations to feed, and our women are now being lured into factory work. What does that leave us as a population? It looks good for our developers when we respond to the North for their demands for agriculture produce. One of the biggest produce we have to now supply to the, to the developed nations is palm oil. Palm oil versus food. We have to choose between palm oil production of food to feed the masses. I come here to Rio and we're talking about food uh, poverty reduction. We cannot achieve poverty reduction if we continue to take land from the masses. And so Papua New Guinea is struggling. What do we want out of this development model we're talking about? Do we want to give up land? Or do we want to hold on land and continue to produce food? We cannot eat fuel. We can, we can enjoy the rest of the food, but fuel to feed the energy demands in the north doesn't work for us. So, our women have to go work on plantations, they have to go work in factories, and we have serious nutrition problems now. Poverty, food poverty, we talk about once not experiencing properly, and we are beginning to see that. When we talk about the economic crisis, 2008 economic crisis, my people were some of the, the Papua New Guineans were some of the few people in the world who did not feel the economic crisis because we have the land, the women are tendering the land. Even though the men are out making business, running around with politicians, the women are on the land and continuously producing food. Our challenge for the women is bringing those food out so that it is accessible to the urban populations. We have real big transport problems, so rural people are very well fed. We don't, we don't want to be talking about poverty in rural, 
uh, populations and as people people d define poverty in the economic terms when we talk about poverty in urban Papua New Guinea but our rural people are happy they're fed and so our rural people are now faced with developers coming in and saying give me your land I want to pr I want to make your land work for you is the land working for us already? We are eating from the wild. The rivers are giving us food. The seas are giving us food. The forests are giving us food. Is the land working for us? So in a way, we don't have to do much to toil the land to produce food, but that is being challenged now. So we have to stand up and watch out. Do we want to give up our land? That is a big question now. So the group I am working with in the last year due to our, our massive, massive CSO pressure on our government, our government decided, okay, we'll have an investigation into what we call the land theft that's happening in Papua New Guinea. It's not coming um, in the proper channels. Now they're formalizing everything. A land grab looks like it's okay. It's okay, we can take your land and we can do whatever you want. But our argument is that we need those land for food production. We can't be sending out a lot of hungry people. We can't be producing kids and not have land to feed them. So there must be some balance somehow. If we want to give up land, we have to compromise on population production. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, in Papua New Guinea. Um, so I come here with a message. Um, we have to stop giving up land. And those people who are grabbing land from rural people have to stop grabbing the land from people. Because then we'll see real, real equality, real freedom we're talking about for the women. Mainly the women will be suffering if there's no land. In Papua New Guinea, the men own the land. It's the women who do the management of the land. So it's the development of the land is in the hands of the women. So if, if the men go and sign up a piece of land, it affects the women and, and the whole population. Thank you.